Hi, my name is Joshua Bolusino. Hi, my name is Brandon Tang. Hi, my name is Arvind Beza, and we're undergraduate engineers, class of 22, under Dr. Kevin Craig. A common interest we all share is basketball, but a problem occurs when playing outdoors. The, we the weather can cause the conditions on the court to become unplayable. The weather can cause it to rain, making the court slippery. It can also make it too sunny to even seed the basket or too hot, causing fatigue to set in quicker. What if there was a deployable cover that is compact enough to fit in urban areas and not disturb the surroundings? Our idea is to create a cover that can be implemented in public parks, beaches, and backyards. Using a scissor lift mechanism in which consists of a set of crossbreak arms that is to be raised or lowered at any height, and any other objects can be attached or placed at the top of the assembly. By adding an arch to this mechanism, we create a cover that acts similar to a, cover, a convertible cover for a car and even a canopy. In order to complete our objective, our mechanism has to complete the following tasks. It has to deploy, extend, retract, and then compact. It has to be done in a short amount of time, has a simple motion profile, and stable function. And we have to complete this project in three months and adhere to the Megatronic base system design process. Our inspiration came from two types of mechanisms. Here on the left, we have a scissor lift mechanism where each link moves with one another up and down in the Y direction. On the right, we have the convertible car top mechanism, which has the motion profile of how we wanted the mechanism to move over a basketball hoop. Our project consists of two mechanisms mentioned on the previous slide as well as a four bar mechanism. A four bar mechanism is the simplest closed chain movable linkage. It consists of four bodies called bars or links, connected in a loop by four joints, and these joints are configured so the links move in parallel planes. Unlike the scissor lift mechanism, in our project, the four bar mechanisms act as the base linkage that moves all the other links in both the X and Y direction. In a four bar mechanism, there is a single loop formed and the vector equation describes the closure of this loop mathematically. The equation that describes the closure of this loop formed in the mechanism are known as a vector loop equation. Doing this analysis, we were able to find the angles of each link to move in the position we want our system to reach. Here is our multi-body simulink diagram. To move our mechanism, we needed to observe the motion of the four bar because it would be used as a primary motion for our mechanism. Using the vector loop analysis, we were able to implement the angles of the joints and the lengths of the links in this diagram. As you can see, the four bar is deploying and retracting by an orange link, which is the crank where the motor will be attached to. At the end of the orange link and the green link is where the cross brace arms will be connected to. In this multi block diagram, we were able to successfully obtain the motion we want and gather information such as time, position, and torque for our controller. Using DST Working Model 2D, we drew our preliminary links and connected them together with pin joints. And we could attach a motor with a baseline of half a radian per second. And from there, we can adjust our parameters and links, adding gravity, change the density of our links, and fitting the links to our desired lengths. Once that's complete, we can extract the position, velocity, acceleration, and our torque graphs. Here is our link kinematic motion. Our first link is the ground. Link two and link three moves in a fixed axis rotation in which moves the mechanism. Link two is very important because it is the crank where the motor is attached to. This link will be able to move our system at an angle from 10 to 65 degrees. Link three, five, six, seven, and eight are moving in a general plane motion. All of our links were drafted in NX2007. Each link has a height of one inch, a thickness of a quarter inch, and has hole diameters of 3 16 at a radial distance of half an inch from the ends of the links. Our crank link, which is attached to our motor, our rocker link, which is located at the stern of the system, the coupler link, which connects the crank to the rotor, link five connects the coupler link six and eight, link six connects the rocker, link five, and link seven. Link 7 connects link 6 and 8 while serves as a support system to link 8. And lastly, link 8 is at the top of our system. Here we have our first project prototype where each link was drawn using CorelDRAW and has a 3 inch hole. We then fabricated each link using la a laser cutter. Our prototype was then placed on our table where we inserted a 1 inch length 3 inch diameter rod in each connection which was then used to visualize the motion of our mechanism on a 2D scale. This prototype was made to see if our virtual model was practical as well as to examine the friction between the links and the rod. So in order to construct our mechanism, we had to order a couple of parts. The 12L15 carbon steel rotary shaft makes our system rigid and connects both of the sides. The 316 stale rotary shaft provides power transmission from our motor to the system. The 254108 brackets attaches our system to the base. The 2519-54 T-nuts attaches our components to our aluminum extrusions. The 20-20-24 aluminum clamping shaft collars connect all of our components along the shaft. And lastly, we had our off-white nylon spaces, which decrease the frictions in between the links. 
Now we're going to talk about how we manufacture all the parts of our project. On the left, we use the drill press to create holes into our acrylic links for connections, as well as the base of our project for our proper foundation. Here we drew the desired lengths and sizes for holes on CorelDRAW, where we then used a laser cutter to cut through the cast acrylic. The laser cutter was also used for etching the Hofstra logo, names, and lines of the basketball court. In this slide, we attach everything together with the spacer in between the links and a shaft collar on the ends and inside of the rod to enclose the two links together. This helps contain the links from moving laterally. The rods were cut using a lathe and are connected to both acrylic structures to create stability and so that the whole structure moves in unison. Here are the specifications of the motor used in our project. It has an output voltage of 24 volts, continuous output torque of 3.39 Nm, peak output torque of 18.25 Nm, and the type of gear is a high torque spur with a gear ratio of 65.5 to 1. The electronics that we used are an advanced motion control brush type PWM servo amplifier and a National Instruments MyRio. A servo amplifier, otherwise known as a servo amp, transfers signals from the command module to the motor. This effectively tells the motor how much it should move at a given time. By using a servo amp, motors are able to perform in a more consistency, meaning that the trajectory and the overall motion is smooth in its applications. The National Instruments MyRio is a reconfigurable input-output device for both analog and digital spectrums in a compact device. This is similar to an Arduino microcontroller, which is pretty much the brains of our system. Our wire configurations are from the power to the motor encoder connected to the MyRio, the MyRio connected to the servo amp, and then the servo amp is connected to the motor. After building our prototype and connecting it to the electronics, it was time to program it graphically using LabVIEW, which is similar to Simulink. Using a fifth order polynomial, we were able to create a smooth motion profile for our design. We input the parameters such as the time, position, and torque into the code. We program the system to be deployed at 5 seconds and will reach its final position when the crank has reached 60 degrees, which is the peak of the amplitude on the graph. Then our mechanism will hold its position for 5 seconds and retract for 5 seconds back to its initial position. To do this, we had to design and tune the feedback control system along with the IPRD controller for our motor. Here we input different number of gains for the proportional control, integral control, and derivative control to find a similar motion profile for our encoder to replicate to our code generated. Due to the friction of our system, it was first difficult to find a similar motion profile. With this disturbance, we had to increase the integral control gain so that the motion profile will be identical. We then used our LabVIEW code and input it into the MyRio. On the top left is our design motion profile for our motor to follow. On the bottom left is the recorded position from the encoder, and on the top right is our math node. Here our working prototype does the task of covering a basketball hoop. Although we closely manufactured and programmed our mechanism to move how it did in working model 2D, you can see the staggering movement when the mechanism deploys and retracts. Even with the similar virtual and recorded motion profiles being very similar, it just goes to show how simulation will not account for friction between materials and any factors of human error. Our first attempt at link construction was a 3D print using ABS plastic resin. We had chosen a complex internal structure, thus making additional drilling impossible without internal damage. We also had placed our links in close proximity for printing optimization. That, along with the printer's onboard cooling fans, warped our links in the process. Our first idea for power transmission was an axis translating gearbox to achieve our compact design. However, the gears that we had selected were too small to effectively grip the other gear during activation, resulting in gear slippage. Also, our 3D printed enclosure could not properly secure the shafts in place. Here are some additional features we would like to add to our mechanism. We would implement a solar panel to our mechanism to make our system self-sufficient. We can also add a remote control so the consumer is able to deploy and retract the mechanism with the press of a button. We can also implement the option to adjust the height and length to any basketball court or even a backyard. Some future iterations we would like our mechanism to be implemented is deploying a solar or infrared panel on satellite buildings and even vehicles. It can also be applied as a new car convertible top and also be used as a mobile scaffold. Lastly, it can be used as a backyard canopy or even a tabletop cover for laptops. Here are some lessons that we learned when designing our mechanism. The first lesson is proper tribology with journal bearings installed within the links would have reduced friction significantly. The second lesson that we learned is with proper planning of material selection and machining procedures that would have greatly reduced our waste. 
The last but most important lesson based off Dr. Craig's teaching is to an analyze forward and inverse kinematics and create a virtual model before building. In addition to the lessons that we learned, the main takeaway of this project was the process of conceptualizing, simulating, and then building, where this process can also be implemented into our professional careers in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Project Cabriel would like to thank our sponsors. The Fred DeMatta School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Dr. Kevin C. Craig, PhD. Keith A. McKenzie. Robert A. Cerro. Lynn Espiritu. Lori A. Castorio. The Lawrence Herbert School of Communications. Fred O'Neill. And Radio Hofstra University. Thank you.